When I talk about armor for theatrical or game-based combat, there are two very common responses. It's made up, why do you care? And or, high heels appeal to men, shut up lady. Neither of these are good enough reasons to wear wedge heels in combat. They just aren't. I will fight you on this hill, and I will win because you will be wearing wedge heels so you won't even make it up the hill before you fall down and hurt yourself so I will win by default. Which frankly would probably be necessary, but that's not the point. But on the other hand, your legs will look great. When I did a video about whether or not it was possible to sword fight in a wedding dress, answer probably, but some options require more prep work than others, I mentioned that shoes were a whole other conversation. So by popular request, here is that conversation. My name is Jill Bera, I make videos analysing movie fights, let's go. The shoes a character wears are dependent on a lot of factors, world, geography, time period, social status, occasion. If the character is going about their daily life and then is suddenly swept up into an adventure, it's a lot easier to suspend disbelief about their costume and shoe choices than if they're a battle-hardened warrior wearing a ridiculous outfit. Much ink was spilled about Claire Deering's high-heeled shoes in Jurassic World, but the thing that got me was this. Those were completely completely appropriate shoes for a professional woman making an important presentation on an ordinary work day. I mean, on rugged terrain, even if you're going to hurt your feet, it might have been better to take them off. Personally, I always like to plan my outfits as if the doctor will appear at any moment and sweep me away for an adventure in the TARDIS, but I understand that other people have different priorities. All costume choices can show character, and shoes are no exception, but there's this weird disconnect with some warrior women in movies where the sexy takes priority over the character, and it's just kind Kinda weird. Nebula is a vengeful cyborg killing machine played by Karen Gillan, who is already pretty tall. She does not need three inch block heels on her costume, but there they are. Unless she's got some kind of weapons hidden in them, Nebula is not a character who gives a single flip about beauty standards, and frankly, Karen Gillan's butt probably looks fine even if she was wearing flat shoes. Or even just boots with a shorter heel? I mean, block heel is preferable to wedge heel when it comes to running around because there's more flex on the sole of the shoe, but still. On the plus side, she's wearing knee length boots which do tone in with her costume. The design is layered and geometric and industrial, which is cool, and she has knee pads. We're not going to get into general costuming right at this second, but obviously bulkier patches where you can stuff a load of knee pads for your actresses and stunt performers. Yes, more of that, please. Knee length boots, if you can justify them, are brilliant because they do provide some degree of leg protection. Not so much against direct blows, though they're better than nothing, but against things like running through vegetation or things exploding around you and there being shrapnel or similar, they're brilliant. I do not remember very much at all about the Hobbit movies, I only saw two of them, but as I recall they gave Toriel very nice practical flat boots. And that short heel means that it's also good for horse riding. Any movie where there's a lot of horse riding is a good way to justify all boots all the time. Or at least mostly boots most of the time. I mean, they also gave her a lot of hair and they've tied it back directly from her face, but it is in front of her shoulders and she's an archer and I'm sorry, we were talking about shoes. Your boots are grand, Toriel. The thicker the leather or whatever you make the boot out of, the less flexibility you have, but the more protection. I mean, Wellingtons are sturdy enough to stand up to a lot of garden related punishment, but I wouldn't enjoy sprinting in them. Moving on, but not too far, Nebula's sister Gamora has full on combat wedges. Now, I've said it before that it's cool if you need to raise your actresses up a bit and so you give them wedge or platform shoes for their walking around scenes. I mean, there are other ways to cheat their height, but this one is easy and I get it. But for official costuming, on their promotional pictures and their life-size cardboard cutouts, it just makes these battle-hardened alien warrior women look like they don't understand biomechanics. Same goes for Wonder Woman, though she isn't an alien. And even if the character isn't vulnerable and biomechanics is just like not a thing for her, the actress and the stunt women portraying her are not. And so then you'll need a flat pair for stunts and you'll need to keep switching back and forth and yada yada. Just keep the heels out of the promotional pictures for warrior women. That's all I'm suggesting here. At the other end of the heel scale we have Harley Quinn who wears high heels quite a lot and yet it works. Partially because Harley is not a superhero and also because she's kind of canonically completely out of her tree, that she would choose to go into battle in athletic stilettos, athletos? Seems fairly in character, especially if A, she's dressed up because she knows she's going to meet the Joker, the only character that she actually seems to care very much about in Suicide Squad, or B, she's out on the town for drinks with her roller derby friends. Harley Quinn having offbeat, brightly coloured, quirky shoes even with high heels works for the character. I mean, in Birds of Prey she does an action scene in roller skates and it's kind of amazing. As a character she does not live by the same kind of suspension of disbelief rules as the characters around her. Which admittedly is kind of weird, but 
Whatever works. Speaking of suspension of disbelief, there's this argument that if you see someone fighting in high heels you should be especially afraid because they are so good at fighting they can overcome that inherent disadvantage. In which case I would like to see more men fighting in high heels please. But I think for me that only really works when they have a casual relationship with reality to begin with, like Harley Quinn, or when they happen to get into a fight while wearing heels as opposed to suiting up for battle and choosing to put high heels on. Black Widow wearing four inch wedges with her superhero costume? just makes her look like an idiot. Much better. Catwoman sneaking around a room and then back flipping out a window in skyscraper stilettos? Sure, okay, why not? Wearing them in a fight in her full tactical gear, even if she's using them as a weapon? It's a really tough sell in such an otherwise serious film. If it were more of a campy Batman adaptation then you can stretch suspension of disbelief and play it for laughs and I think that would kind of work, but the Dark Knight Rises is not that kind of film. Suspension of disbelief in general depends very much on the tone of the piece of media. Like the 2000 Charlie's Angels movie gets away with a ridiculous collection of shoes, but that's basically because you have either decided that everything here is so over the top that you're just gonna go with it, or you've already noped right on out of there. My top underrated shoe choice which you can adapt to basically any setting, because I mean trainers and tennis shoes, are both great but they do kind of place you in a pretty specific time period, is ankle boots. They can be sturdy like hiking boots or work boots with steel toe caps, though bear in mind that that will make you very clumpy. They can be leather or suede, they can have decorations on them, they can be laced or zipped or buttoned depending on setting, but even really formal outfits like wedding dresses can generally accommodate an ankle boot underneath if you make it the right colour, if it's sufficiently fine in construction, and if it's nicely decorated. Bellatrix Lestrange wears mid-calf length laced boots with a is that called a flared heel? You see that style of heel quite a lot on Edwardian and Victorian style shoes. Either way, because the heel of the shoe is a bit more centred over your actual heel, and the flare gives you a little bit more contact with the ground, and they're not too high, they're pretty sturdy. Bellatrix might have to run around but her principal weapon is a wand, so I really like this shoe choice. It fits in with her evil magic steampunk vibe while still being reasonably practical. This character in Iron Sky wears something similar, but you'll notice that the heels are higher, spindlier, and centred on the back of the foot. So all of those things make it less practical. And even the more impractically heeled boots do have the advantage that they attach to your feet. Which is also true of a lot of kinds of shoes, including trainers, but a lot of women's more formal options tend to be a bit flingy. I personally love brogues, which do lace on, but court shoes or peep toe stilettos? Mm, not so much. They may stay on your feet while walking about, but what if you're running? Or kicking? Ballet flats are, well, flat, which is a plus, but they do have a distressing tendency to fly off your foot when you run or kick out. Great surprise ranged opening move, but now you're barefoot, so that might not be ideal. Point shoes, a la Gwen Stacy, are firmly affixed to your foot, and I bet you could do some damage with that wooden toe box, but I've never actually worn them, so I can't really speak to their practicality. Also, aren't they quite expensive and otherwise delicate? Don't know, just just, just wondering. That said, I do have these which are technically ballet flats but come with tying on things so you can attach them to your ankles. They're pretty good. Flat sandals don't offer any protection to the top of the foot, but they have been the footwear choice of many different cultures in many different time periods, and there is a reason for that. Samurai warrior? Sandals. Greek hoplite? Sandals. Roman centurion? Sandals. Is the weather warm? Sandals. In a Black Panther movie? Sandals or flat boots, my friend. I mean, Nakia does wear stilettos, but they don't last very long on her feet once the fighting starts. Flip-flops and mules are barely attached to your feet, and so you often have to grip with your toes just to keep them on, which isn't ideal. Unless they have very high heels, they're probably better than nothing on nasty, rocky, sharp terrain, but not really the best choice. I have absolutely no idea if Crocs would be any good for fighting, but they do have a strap that goes around the back, so... Maybe? If you have ever tried to fight in Crocs, do leave a comment, and they would certainly make an interesting character choice. In the absence of laces, shoes with straps are much more likely to stay on your foot. I bought these at the charity shop for £4 for an upcoming video in which I may be required to do something quite impressive in them, but more on that another time, because we're allowed to mix with other households now, and I have plans. Thing is, any laced or strapped shoe is probably going to be fine, provided you don't go nuts with the heel, so 
Let's get into those for a second. Wedge heels I have previously discussed in a somewhat ranting fashion. Their design makes the sole of the shoe inherently just less flexible, and they raise you up which isn't ideal either. This might be a good time to explain why being higher off the ground is a disadvantage when physical activity is required. It's like this. Your ankles are usually a certain distance from the ground. In order to prevent you from turning your ankle while you're performing strenuous activities like running or jumping, your muscles are working to stabilise you. Overcoming the strength of your muscles and causing you to turn your ankle requires a certain amount of moment. Moment is a product of force and distance. The higher your heel, the greater the length of the moment arm, that's the distance between your ankle and the ground, and so the lower the force required in order to cause you to fall over. And that's just wedges. For other heel types, not having your entire heel in contact with the ground means you're also just more likely to slip on things, and you're more likely to sink into soft surfaces like grass. You can see the mess of the heel from where I had to walk across my lawn. Plus, wearing high heels of any kind increases the compressive force on your knee joints by up to 23%, and that's just when you're walking. And it also means in the long term you might be more likely to develop osteoarthritis, which is not really relevant to combat at all, but I did think it was interesting. But my character needs heels. Heels, I hear you say. For the horse riding. Horse riding stirrup boot. The long boots have heels about this size too. Cowboy boots have higher heels than that and they are a reasonable option, but remember cowboy boots are optimised for riding, not for walking. Also remember historically when it came to men's high heels, Louis's highest of the high heels because he was the most important person in France were bright red seven or eight centimetre block heels. And that's in his fancy court photo. So can we collectively agree that the people who have previously been commenting, but they need stilettos or wedges for horse riding, can just stop? Great. If you must have heels, or you just really want them, the wider they are at the base the better. But you don't want them to extend past the actual heel because then they're wedges. If the heel is low enough you can basically do as you please. Unless what you please involves striding across soft grass and not sinking in if you're wearing particularly pointy heels. But when it comes to shoes and fighting, your biggest considerations are, is it firmly attached to the foot? How high is the heel? What size and shape is the heel? You can absolutely ignore all practicality-based considerations for a character should you think that it's justified. Looking at you, Harley Quinn. But if your character is a battle-hardened mercenary, she is probably not going to be sporting four-inch stilettos on a muddy battlefield unless she's having a really really bad day. You may enjoy my original shoe rant, or possibly just my entire playlist where I talk about and demonstrate fighting in various kinds of costume. Or you can always add your thoughts about shoes in the comment section. See you next time!